Here's an idea. We're all nomads in the land of ideas. Here it is, the home stretch. In the final three Idea Channel videos, we're gonna do something a little different. Instead of talking smart about pop culture collided with some theory, we're gonna talk about Idea Channel. Specifically, the sorts of principles that helped shape the show and emerged from five years of doing it. Of course, as you may know, principles can be tough. These videos aren't gonna be an explanation of how every single episode was made. In fact, some episodes have transgressed Idea Channel's principles. And the show has changed a lot over the years. As, as have I. I'm also not describing the Idea Channel method as a victory lap either, as a way to say like, look at how we nailed all of our goals. I'm providing this more as an explanation and maybe also kind of encouragement. If you wanna become the Idea Channel you wish to see in the world, maybe these final episodes will shed some light on what we tried to do, even if we didn't always succeed at doing it. The first thing we're gonna tackle, the subject of this video is ideas, specifically what they are and who gets to have them. And this is a huge topic, one that many philosophers have tackled, but we're gonna start with a broad view. All subjects of mental activity, all things that you think with or about, are ideas. Potato, democracy, the Justice League, your mother, Spain in 1492, all ideas. And while Idea Channel has covered a lot of territory, we haven't covered that much. The sort of ideas that we traffic in are of a particular type. For example, imagine you're at the soda counter with a friend and they say, oh dang, last night I had this idea. What follows is unlikely to be potato. Not because potato is a bad idea, but because such excitedness often precedes something a little bit more unexpected. A combination of mental representations which your friend has reason to believe you won't think is obvious or boring. Something like, when you really think about it, skateboarding is a type of ballet. Or, oh, this thing we read in moral philosophy class really made me think about Captain America. These are the kinds of ideas that Idea Channel focused on. What, for the sake of communication and at the expense of some clarity, we're gonna call complex ideas. The novel combination of one or more pre-existing ideas. And as an audience member, it probably became clear what sort of pre-existing ideas we were most interested in. Basically, we start with something familiar and we try to combine it with something not. One ingredient in the Idea Channel soup has always been big, old, and impactful ideas. The ones that have names and long Wikipedia entries like love, being, liberty, evil, popularity, violence, religion, nostalgia, genre, and so on. We're gonna call these ideas concepts. Concepts inform an episode's theoretical framework. Philosophers and theorists help us understand what each concept is, how it works, where it comes from, and so on. But theorists aren't the only people who work with concepts. We all do, each and every one of us. Of course, unless you are a philosopher, you probably don't confront ideas like self or privacy directly and for their own sake. But you do confront them through world events, personal experiences, media, entertainment, and elsewhere. We can find these big impactful concepts hiding in many often unexpected corners of the world. And by looking for impactful concepts in media, contemporary art, entertainment, technology, community practices, the seemingly mundane and oftentimes the familiar, you simultaneously make the everyday more exciting and the highfalutin more useful in your day-to-day -day life. You become a more powerful agent of experience and thought in your everyday life. And my aim has been to present these often unexpected relationships between one or more concepts, media properties, or theories as observation. Specifically, observations made by me, Mike Rugnetta, one person with a particular background and a set of interests. Now, this approach has its drawbacks, but it's important, I think. It gives the show a clear grounding. I'm always me. We always start from my perspective. Here's an idea. The combination of these factors, that complex ideas are presented as observations had by a single person, and that person is someone with a clear perspective, also helps with the ultimate goal of Idea Channel to encourage conversation, to get you talking to me and hopefully one another about the observations I've related from my perspective. Your individual perspective may be and probably is different from mine and so presented as observation, not fact, there's just that much more room for you and hopefully anyone to say, huh, I had a different idea and then write a comment. Which brings us to our next big point. Who gets to have ideas? The short answer is everyone! Everyone has experiences, so everyone has ideas. But really what I'm asking is who gets to have 
complex ideas. Who gets to have and discuss openly the kinds of ideas which traffic in the recombination of far-flung concepts, theories, media, and related observation? The answer is still, I think, everyone. Not just experts, not just academics or smart people, not just ivory tower types or the elite, everyone. But it's tough to create a situation where everyone feels welcome to engage with this occasionally difficult material. We tried our best, but there are lots of challenges, and I'm gonna talk about two of them. The first has to do with the most well-known professional idea havers that have existed, and second, with how we do the work of applying their thought to wide-ranging subject matter. So, the history of complex ideas doesn't make it easy to sell the message that everyone can have ideas. Looking at the Western canon of respected thinkers, you might notice they have some things in common. This set isn't representative of a grocery store checkout line, let alone everyone. This presents a catch-22 for us. If we're gonna do ideas, we gotta do the classics. Much of it is interesting, important, and the foundation of current thought, which is thankfully and increasingly diverse. But also, we don't wanna do so much of the old stuff or stick to it so closely that we end up simply recreating the homogeneity of the past. So then, what kind of work can we do with these important concepts so that they're not so precious? And so the process of working with them seems less, I don't know, stern, more inviting, and also inviting of wildly different perspectives and backgrounds. One answer involves two of the very people we would want to treat this way, French philosophers Gilles Deleuze and Félix Guattari. And luckily, they gave us permission to treat them this way. Their thought provides a huge inspiration to how I, and by extension Idea Channel, treat concepts and complex ideas. In the intro to their book, A Thousand Plateaus, they describe how they want their book treated. A book, they say, isn't a mirror for the world. Books don't contain some slice of the one truth that you're gonna find somewhere out there in the wilderness of reality, for two reasons. First, whoa, how do we even know there even is one single truth? And two, even if there was, who's to say a book would be able to contain it? So here you are, holding this book that has just told you, uh, Maybe no truth in here, bub. So what's it for then? Deleuze and Guattari basically say, listen, don't read the book, use it. Use it how you see fit. They say this in a very French, very exclamatory way that we'll put over here so that you can read it. But basically they say, don't get bogged down. In his intro, the book's translator, Brian Masumi, puts it this way. The reader is invited to lift a dynamism out of the book entirely and incarnate it in a foreign medium, whether it's painting or politics. The authors steal from other disciplines with glee, but they are more than happy to return the favor. Deleuze's own image for a concept is not a brick, but a toolbox. Throughout the book, Deleuze and Guattari rapidly shift perspectives, disciplines, styles, and subject matter in the pursuit of uncovering something about the interconnectedness of the world, the psyche, and the body. This kind of speedy, frenetic theorizing where ideas are not built with, but used, they call it nomadic thought. That has become the model for lots of my work, and so also Idea Channel, nomadic thought. We move around a lot, often haphazardly, and we use whatever ideas are around or available, often in ways not intended or expected, but always, hopefully, while preserving some sense of dynamism. Not building on those ideas so much as using them to unlock, and in some cases, pry open various parts of the world. And the hope is that this pursuit becomes less daunting if we worry less about building or perfecting and more about using, exploring, testing. And ideally, we do it together so that you're not alone. We do it with one another in conversation. Nomadic thought is also one of the guiding principles for treating Idea Channel like a conversation. It's why I read your comments, respond to them, and incorporate them into the show. I want the nomadic, interconnected frenzy of ideas to be comprised not just of mine, but also yours. I want these videos to be things that you do more than simply videos that you like or subscribe to. Though, I want to be clear, it's also rad that you have done that as well. I hope now, after Idea Channel ends, the catalog of videos can provide a framework for something you can continue to do. 
in your own way, with others, with other media, material, complex ideas and concepts out there in the world. I hope you can continue to be worried less about building and more about using. Deleuze and Guattari said, don't have just ideas, just have ideas. Meaning, don't worry if it's right before having an idea. Have it first and then decide. What do y'all think about our ideas about ideas? Let us know in the comments. I'll respond to some of them in next week's comment response video. In case you missed the comment response video for our Mario episode, Mario and Surrealism, that came out two weeks ago. We'll put a link to that in the doobly-doo. One very big piece of news, we have confirmed the time and place of the Farewell Idea Channel office hours. It will be uh, on September 8th from 6 to 8 p.m. at Caveat in uh, the Lower East Side of Manhattan. There's gonna be limited space, so we are gonna be doing RSVPs. In order to attend, you're gonna have to RSVP. RSVPs will open this Friday on August 18th, uh, around 2 p.m. Eastern time. We're gonna post links to uh, all of the places where we can possibly post links once they're open. It's gonna be really fun. I hope you join us. There's gonna be drinks. Uh, there's gonna be some food. It's gonna be all ages. Uh, I'm gonna say a couple things, but mostly we're just gonna be there to hang out, uh, talk, say hi, and uh, you know, just talk about some stuff. Hang out, have a good time. We have a Facebook and IRC and a subreddit, links to those in the doobly-doo. And the tweet of the week comes from Slink McClowish, who points us towards a McSweeney's piece that is some content about content. And last but certainly not least, this week's episode would not have been possible or good without the very hard work of these nomadic thinkers.